sometimes I uh, like to get up extra early when I don't have to on Saturday mornings and go have fun in my desert playground. How beautiful it is out here. Well, good morning to you. Sam here with Surviving the Southwest. Out here in the desert on a Saturday morning with my sidekick, Bailey. Bailey, hey, come here. Come say hi to the folks. Mm -hmm. That's Bailey. She get down. So, uh, you know, a good friend a lot in these videos. Hope you all don't take me too serious, but there's a small element of seriousness to them. Today, I want to have some real talk. This is a new channel, so a little bit of get to know you time. And after that, probably go over my everyday carry, also known as EDC. And uh, who knows, I might even play a little bit of guitar for y'all. So uh, without further ado, we'll see you out there. First order of business, we're going to go over how to build a fire with a ferro rod. You're going to want really small, fine fibers that are very dry. Don't make them too dense. You kind of want to loosen them up. Next, we'll need our uh, ferro rod and our uh, striker. Here we go. This is how you start a fire with a ferro rod. Look at that. Wouldn't you know? First try. Let's get to building it. All right, now the camp's all set up. This video is brought to you by Igloo and Corner. My name is Sam, and this is. Alright, now we got the guitar playing out of the way. Coffee. Beverage Warriors. So, man, I've been wanting to do, uh, do a channel like this for a while. And I always had excuses, always too busy. Um, got a lot going on work and, and uh, drinking beer <laughs> so, 75 it's actually been 77 days now I cut all alcohol out of my life I was pretty much an everyday drinker you know after work and all just unwind with the boys or by myself or with the dog and uh, I wouldn't make much progress with anything play a little bit of guitar here and there Take the dog for a walk, go hiking once in a while. I've always been to outdoor stuff, so you know it's uh it's always been a passion of mine, but the damn alcohol man, that that laziness you get from it holds you back on a lot of stuff. So 77 days ago today I just decided to completely cut it out of my life and it's been amazing. I've gotta tell you, I've never felt better. Uh just immediately started dropping weight. I weighed about 240 and I just it just started melting off. So I figured why not start hitting the, the nutrition routine in, in the gym and see what happens. And uh, 77 days later I dropped 35 pounds. I beat my sleep apnea, my high blood pressure is down to normal. And like I had like some blemishes on my skin. I didn't know what those were from, but they're all gone. Like I, I feel fantastic. My strength is up. Like me right now at 36 could kick my 19 year old ass straight out of boot camp. I guarantee it. It only took 77 days. But, um, 
you know, it wasn't all easy. It was a struggle at first. Drinking becomes routine, you know, as it does. You know, just to get past that gas station after work and not pick up any beer or anything on the way home. That was the first step, you know. Um, yeah, I gotta tell you, my wife's a lot happier because I'm not keeping her up with my snoring anymore at night. <laughs> or choking from the sleep apnea. If you guys have got any questions about, uh, you know, what kind of tools I use to stop drinking. Some things I've used on diet, nutrition to drop weight and kind of my routine with the gym. And I've been doing a lot of studying for the last couple of years on this stuff, but I never completely gave myself a chance to complete what I wanted to complete without, you know, kicking the alcohol. Now that I've kicked the alcohol, everything just fell into place. It's been great. So, some ideas I got for this video this morning is uh, give you guys a rundown on my everyday carry. Now, I know I'm going to have some people kind of ragging on me. Where, where's the firearms and the knives? You know, if you got questions about that stuff, let me know. Um, some things happened out here in New Mexico where I'm going to lay low on that kind of stuff for a little while. Um, all I got to say is uh, if you feel comfortable with carrying, do your research, pick a firearm, pick a knife, you know, pick, pick your choices of self-defense, get trained on it. That is the most important part. If you're going to spend a thousand dollars on a rifle, you better be spending a thousand dollars on training too. You can't just go around and, um, you know, be carrying these things and not expect uh, certain consequences when you use them. Learn your laws of the land. And that's all I want to say about that stuff. But here in a little bit, we'll go over my everyday carry. And uh, I have a little uh, truck bed set up too that I've been kind of messing around with. And it's just for convenient camping. It takes like maybe 10 minutes tops to set everything up. And maybe 10 minutes tops to throw everything back into my garage. It's kind of nice and convenient. It's just something I've been kind of playing around with. So we'll go over that. But, uh, yeah, if anyone's got any questions about anything, leave them down in the comments. More than happy to answer and uh, share my experiences and knowledge and, and what I've learned so far. Thank you. All right. Now for the everyday carry portion of this video also known as EDC. Got my dog. <laughs> Obviously every day I wear clothes. You guys have seen this hat in every video. You know, I'm a ball guy, so I gotta protect the dome. Always wear sunglasses, gotta protect the eyes. Got my keys, self-explanatory. Got a pen and a notepad. Gotta constantly take notes for work. Man, I get flooded with all kinds of stuff and and if I didn't do this I'd probably get fired plus I just I always got all these ideas like I just get all these ideas just just flowing through my head man from music and just everything they all go in here no pad and pen got a lighter not a smoker but this thing is uh, useful for more things than just smoking now to my pack Tampons and lipstick. Crap, I, I grabbed the wrong purse. All right, that's a goof. Tampons are useful. Lipstick, not so much. Uh, I guess you can make notes with it, whatever, so we'll put it with the notepad. <laughs> but what you use tampons for, and, and the reason why I carry these is for the... Uh, unlikely event that you get caught up in an active shooter situation or some kind of shooting happens these are extremely sterile and they're made to stop blood and they're the perfect size for bolt hole wounds you know it's a good temporary fix until the professionals can show up i would highly advise carrying tampons even though it's kind of weird when you get caught with them as a man <laughs> next first aid kit 
And here we got a bunch of ouchie boo boo stuff. We can go over all that on another video if you're interested in seeing what I personally carry. I'm not a medic, but I've been combat lifesaver certified in the military and I also uh, keep up with my certifications for first aid and CPR. So I you know, try to do the best I can given certain situations with work and, and being the first person on a car accident, stuff like that. You just want to be able to know how to help people. There's really bandage attached to it. Very useful. Nine bucks on eBay. Go get one. All right, next is my Shemag. Every corny veteran's got to have one, right? Also useful for a lot of stuff. We'll go into that later. This is my face sock. Working out in the construction field in New Mexico. It gets very windy and very uh, sand blasty very quick, so this protects my face. Utility gloves. Obviously, don't need to explain those. Fluorescent orange search and rescue beanie. This also works good for work too. You want people to be able to see you on the job site so they don't run you over. Next, I got my tablet, just for work. I guess you can play video games on it, but uh, not interested, so use that for work. Power bank, constantly forgetting to charge my phone. So I had to get a huge, obnoxious one. It works very well. And my book, that's my morale right here. If I finally get some time to rest around uh, maybe a lunch break or something, you know, say I might get one every now and then, and I like to bust this open. And sometimes it'll put me into a nap stage to where I can maybe get 15 minutes of rest. But what doesn't kill us? Scott Carney. This is a freaking awesome book about Wim Hof. I love reading it right now during the winter time. It's all about just uh, cold therapy, you know, uh, building that brown fat. Hence why I'm wearing a t-shirt right now in the early mornings of the winter time. So, it's working. <laughs> Very interesting book. Wallet, so I could purchase all my things. Headphones, so I could drown out the outside noise when I need to. And just keys, those with the other keys. Now, I didn't modify any of this stuff. This is what I carry day to day. This is what I carried yesterday. This is what I carried for the last week and the last month. Just, uh, you know, except for the lipstick. I modified that. That's for funny. Another pin. As they say, one is none, two is one. Carry a tourniquet on the outside for easy access. Apparently not so easy, but that was the thought process on that. It's always good to have a tourniquet with you. And... Cheesy Leatherman I bought off of eBay. It was maybe 15, 20 bucks, but it gets the job done for me. Haven't had any issues with it. Over here, carry a little handheld radio. You know, it's a weather two way. Um, you can listen to emergency services on here just in case anything is going down. This is also a ham radio. I do not have my license, so I don't use it for that, but I plan on getting my license so I can use this thing to its full effect. In here, it's just a small power bank and uh, more things to recharge my electrical devices, batteries and whatnot. In here, got the E-Shine T25. Ant got this for me. I freaking love this light. It's my favorite light, very bright. Got my GPS, just because I like to keep up on this thing. It's nice to know how to use it when you need to use it. Oh yeah, this is a Garmin E-Trex Touch 35T. Pretty nice little deal. Got my uh, pepper spray. So, there's a little thing called escalation of force. You don't always want to go for the knife or the firearm. This goes into what I said earlier. Uh, get your training in. Learn the laws of the land. I'm not going to touch on that stuff right now, but this right here I think is a must for everyone to have, if anything. If you have a female friend or a, um, a friend who isn't uh, very tough, you could always give this to them and buy another one. If they need some kind of self-defense. You want to take care of your own. Another flashlight. It's a little cheesy one, but like I said, one is none, two is one. It's nice to have those. I need them a lot for work. So if you got any other questions on this stuff, leave them in the comment section and we'll talk about it. Um, you know, I've, I've been kind of 
playing with EDC stuff for the last couple of years. Kind of found what works for me, what doesn't. I had more of a tactical looking pack. Everyone kind of knew what I had in there and and they would uh, say things and I'd, it was just too obvious, you know, that I'm packing them, you know, was packing at the time. So I bought this little bit more feminine looking bag. It's, uh, it's not as obvious, <laughs> so hopefully. Anyway, that's what I got for now. If you guys got anything, leave a comment. Thank you. Well, that's going to do it for today's video. The fire is out. The guitar is out of tune. The coffee's cold. The dog's already tired. We haven't even gone on our hike yet. I know I said that we would be touching on the truck camper setup, but we're just going to have to save that for another video. Thank you guys for sticking with me. Have a good rest of the day. See you next time.